Last time we learned how to program a simple sequence that uses all the four channels of a single track. Today we will see how to expand this sequence. When composing we have two main ways of expanding our musical idea. Horizontally, which is through melody, and vertically, or through the harmony. On the usta we expand our melody by changing the pattern loop and we expand our harmony by stacking more tracks. Let us start from the melody. So far we have used just pattern 1 of track 1. Usta allows us to write up to 32 patterns per track. That is quite a long melody. Before writing new lines, however, we need to understand the concept of pattern loop. By default, when we play our sequence, Usta loops endlessly over pattern 1. However, we can make a track loop across as many patterns as we want. All we need to do is defining the first and the last pattern of this pattern loop, and Usta will begin again from the first one once it has finished the last one. Now both the first and last patterns are pattern 1, so our pattern loop has the length of only one pattern. To change the first and the last pattern we must enter the performance mode by pushing the pencil button and switching to the green LED. It is called performance mode because it allows all the non-destructive actions that you may need while performing. We will see them throughout this video. In performance mode we no longer edit the content of our patterns, but we edit the pattern loop structure. We can say that edit mode changes the content of our sequence, while performance mode changes its form. We have two methods for changing our first and last pattern. In the first method we hold down set all and rotate the navigation encoder to change the first pattern, and we hold the shift all button while rotating the same navigation encoder to change the last one. Please note that you cannot have a first pattern's number higher than the last one. We can even hold down both buttons and change both patterns simultaneously, thus shifting the pattern loop. If we change our pattern loop while Usta is playing, the changes will become effective once it has reached the end of the current playing pattern. However, if we change our pattern loop, we hear nothing. We wrote our sequence only over pattern 1, so we need to populate the other ones. Let us then go back to edit mode. These two numbers display the first and the last patterns on the dashboard. We are still on pattern 1, which is occasionally crossed by the playhead, but you can see that the first and the last pattern numbers have changed. In edit mode we always see the pattern that we are currently editing, as opposed to performance mode where we always see the pattern presently playing in real time. It is thus essential to become familiar with the C and play digit on the dashboard. C indicates the selected pattern and play the playing one. The two digits are the same in performance mode, but they can differ in edit mode, because we can edit a pattern that is not currently playing. To change the C pattern, simply rotate the navigation encoder. We can use all the editing tools we saw in the previous video to expand our sequence. Composing while playing, composing while Usta is stopped, or utilizing the dedicated composition mode. However, since we already wrote a pattern, we can use another function that may speed up our editing, the clone function. When in clone structure page, we can copy and paste information batches, like tracks, patterns, or just channels, like CVA or gate B. When in clone mode, the stage encoders represent the patterns. The first one is pattern 1, the second one is pattern 2, and so on until pattern 16. Hold Shift All and the stages will select the patterns from 17 to 32. Let us hold the Ask button and push the Shift button. To clone pattern 1 over pattern 2, push the first stage encoder and then the second one. That's it. If you push any other encoder, you will paste the first pattern over all of them. Now you will hear that pattern 2 sounds like pattern 1. We can thus edit it to add some variation, for example by keeping the same length structure and changing the melody. Once we have a bunch of patterns, we can better appreciate the pattern loop changes. At this point, we can introduce two more performative actions of the performance mode, the pattern recall and the pattern mix. 
When in performance mode, the stage encoders correspond to the 32 patterns in the same fashion that we just saw for cloning patterns. If we push an encoder, Usta will recall the corresponding pattern and play it once the current pattern has ended. Then it returns to where it left. This is the pattern recall function and allows us to scramble our pattern loops order or even to throw in some patterns that are outside it. Pattern mix has a similar function, but instead of playing the recalled pattern after the current one, it mixes and merges them. For example, if we select pattern 3 during stage 5 of pattern 4, after the current stage, Usta will jump straight to stage 6 of pattern 3. To mix two patterns, hold the chorus button before recalling them through the stage encoders. These tools are a great way of improvising with our structure. Now that we have familiarized ourselves with this peculiar use of the stage encoders, we can introduce the second way of changing the pattern loop that we mentioned before. Hold down the Set All button and push the encoders corresponding to the first and then the last pattern in this order. To access the patterns from 17 to 32, hold it together Set All and Shift All. If you push only one stage encoder, it will select both the first and the last pattern, thus defining a one-pattern loop on the fly. Now that we have expanded our sequence horizontally through our melody, it is time to expand it vertically through harmony. Let us then begin to work with more tracks. First, we need to make sure that all the tracks we plan to use are set to the same tempo, unless of course we want to do some more experimental stuff. To do so, enter their track menu. If they have different settings, use the Set All button to apply the settings of track 1 to all the other ones. Then, we must note that the pattern loop settings are independent per tracks. It is thus possible, for example, to have a ostinato bass line of 8 stages and a much longer and articulated main melody. In this case, we must keep an eye over the pattern length and number to keep them in sync. At this point, we can play with the pattern recall and pattern mix of track 1 to create more meaningful harmonic variations. Then we can also expand our tracks by writing chords. The easiest way is by writing every chord voice into a different track. We can write our bass voice with the lowest chord tone and then enter the clone structure page and clone a track 4 over tracks 3 and 2. In this way, the three tracks are identical. However, please remember that cloning a track will only clone its content, not its menu settings. Here's why we set them beforehand. Then we can transpose their voices up to complete the chord tones. However, there is another, more effective way to create chords. Let us then enter the track menu for tracks 2 and 3, scroll until the CVA and CVB menu items and assign both to pitch. Now the CVB of tracks 2 and 3 outputs volt per octave notes instead of row voltages and we can fit two notes in the same stage. We can now have four note chords in only two tracks, thus sparing tracks 1 and 4 for lead and bass, providing that we have enough oscillators and will to tune them. When creating chords, all the gates must be up simultaneously. However, if you plan to have snappy stabs, you can even use a single envelope to control their articulation, thus sparing three gates tracks that you can use for other purposes. For example, in this patch we use the 333 to pre-mix the chord voices before controlling their global amplitude through a single envelope to a CGM channel.
now that our stages contain so many notes, you can speed up the arrangement by cloning them. It is now time to check the last cloning function. By accessing the clone structure page, we can select a channel and clone it to another one. For example, by cloning CVA over CVB, now that both are set to pitch voltages. It is also possible to clone the channel of one pattern over to another pattern's channel, in a sort of channel cross-cloning. When in clone channel, hold down the channel you want to clone and then the encoder corresponding to the pattern it belongs to. Then hold the channel button and push the stage encoder of the target pattern. If our song has a more rigid vertical structure, like all the tracks are sharing the same pattern loop settings, we can change them all at once by double-clicking Shift-All once we have made our first change to the pattern loop in performance mode. Now that we got used to the concept of a pattern loop, we can introduce the stage loop. It is a portion of our pattern loop that we can repeat several times. We can think of it as a loop within a loop that can be turned on or off. There is only one stage loop per track. We have three parameters of our stage loop that we can read in the bottom line of the dashboard. From is the first stage. You will see that the dashboard has two numbers. The first one is the stage number from 1 to 16. And the second one is the pattern number from 1 to 32. Length is how many stages are in the loop and 4 is the number of repetitions. To edit these three parameters, hold down the corresponding mod button and rotate the navigation encoder. Now to activate the pattern loop, double-click the Set All button. You will see that the pattern loop will light up. The color is red, meaning that the pattern loop is not yet active. It will become green only when the playhead will cross the first stage that we defined in the From parameter. We can activate or deactivate the stage loop from either Edit mode or Performance mode. You can repeat the pattern loop up to 16 times. However, if you set it to zero, it will loop infinitely. In case we set the length to zero, we must double-click the Set All button to disable the stage loop. And finally, a bonus tip. Another way of creating rhythmic, melodic and harmonic variations is through polyrhythms, polymeters and multitempos. Let us start with two identical tracks. Now let's go to track 2 and change its clock to unit ratio to achieve a polyrhythm. Or we can remove or add one stage to make the two pattern loops asymmetrical, thus creating a polymeter. And finally we can add or subtract a BPM digit to phase it in and out. With firmware 155, we are introduced the decimal clock division for even slower changes. Enter the track menu, select the Find BPM option and add up to 99 cents of BPM to that track. 